Hey YouTube, Joe Boy here. So, the point of this video, what eventually we're going to try and do, is simply make the video 10 minutes. You guys know whether I failed or not, please. But we're wasting time. No, this isn't about making a 10 minute video. However, that is my objective as well. Today we want to talk about Frankie. This is going to relate directly to the last video that I made that was 50 minutes. Essentially what you need to understand from that video is that the strides are going to connect literally everyone together, every group, every faction, everything. But while it's not necessary to watch that video, I do recommend that you do so because I would like you to watch both videos. Do I need another reason? Link in the description. You can watch it after this one. Called the Stride Army will be insane. So one of the important concepts that I discussed that are relevant to this is that Oda is going to give even more connections to the current Straw Hat members, the members of the crew themselves, in much the same way that Sanji became a Vinsmoke. Zoro is probably related to the country of Wano, maybe royalty. And Oda's decked out Luffy in pretty much every way that you can imagine, and he may not be done. Obviously, the Straw Hats already have some connections that are very noteworthy. Robin is the last person from Ohara. Frankie trained under Tom, who happened to also have the blueprints to the counter Pluton. Usopp is already the son of Yasop, who is a member of the red-haired pirate Yonko crew. Right, these things are already built in there, I'm just going to suggest that there may be more. But in this one we want to add to Frankie, because I think that there is room to. This is just an aside, but I think that names are important in the world of One Piece. Oda uses names as actual plot points pretty commonly. So just some examples of this, we've already talked about Zoro and Sanji, I think that Zoro becomes Shimotsuke Zoro or something like that, Sanji is now Vinsmoke Sanji. You have this whole concept of the D initial which is related to names and it's taken even further with Trafalgar Law because he is, is not only given the middle initial of D but also a middle name of water. This isn't just true of strats, you see this with Momonosuke, Momonosuke was just Momonosuke for a long while until it was Kozuki Momonosuke. Sometimes you have examples like Ace, where it's Porkos D. Ace, but that name was incorrect, at least paternally. We're not going to go through all these theories, but I just want you to understand that names are important in One Piece, Oda uses them commonly to create hype. And perhaps the most unique example of a weird name in the story of One Piece, or at least weird in how it's used, is Frankie. We know Frankie's real name, his real name is Cuddy Flam. But the fascinating thing about this name is that Frankie has not used it for near enough 20 years. And Oda created this scenario in a very natural way that totally makes you dismiss the importance of the name itself. Iceberg asked Frankie to drop the name Cuddy Flam because it tied him to Tom and thereby the blueprints of Pluton. Doing it this way removes any sense of possible secrecy. In a way, it's kind of an inversion of Sanji, where Sanji's last name was missing. Well, Frankie's last name is missing in a very different way. Most of the world simply does not know because on every Frankie bounty poster, the name is Frankie. The only people who appeared to know Frankie's real name besides Iceberg was the world government with all of their connections. They could only barely discover this fact because Cuddy Flem is assumed dead. And even further than this, and I find this to be interesting, if somebody were to recognize Frankie from his youth, they would have a difficult time putting a face to actual Frankie because that dude has been experimenting on himself for a very long time. He looks nothing, especially now, nothing like he should. So basically what we're speculating here is the name Cuddy Flem is important. It's potentially recognizable or significant in some way, but in what way and why don't we already know? There are three theories that I think are prevalent about Frankie. Frankie is the child of Vegapunk. I like this theory quite a lot. But its main issue is that Frankie reveals that his parents were pirates and that they kicked him off their ship and it doesn't vibe with me totally. There's a theory that Frankie's family are in the Revolutionary Army. I don't like this theory that much. And there's a theory that Frankie is a descendant of the famous shipwright family from the Void Century. The one Din tells us is responsible for designing the Noah and likely designed the Pluton. I personally think that this family was a family of fishmen and relates to Din and Tom, not Frankie. So being unsatisfied with the theories that I've heard, I'm looking for something that I really like. And in this video, I found it. And I'm going to speculate something that I'm 100% sure you have never heard before. The idea is, is that Frankie's family are big time players in the One Piece underground. So don't judge too quickly, let's lay out the evidence. And let's begin with what we know about the underground. Little known fact, the first time that the underground came up in the story of One Piece 
was through Frankie. He mentioned the black market where he purchased Adamswood, which he ultimately built the Thousand Sunny out of. First mention of the underground in the entire story. It didn't really come back up or we didn't really see it again until Seb and Odie when we got in, uh, introduced to the human house, which was owned by Doflamingo, who we later learned was perhaps the most important player in the underground, going by the alias of a Joker. Now, there's two really important concepts here, right? First off, a pirate, Doflamingo, was a major player in the underground. Second off, Doflamingo, despite already being a pirate, had a code name specific to the underground called the Joker. Not the only character that we know that had an alias. Mother Carmel was known as the Mountain Witch. So there is likely to be other pirates and other characters who go by a particular alias, are known by their underground alias. But I just want to take a moment to make you understand just how prevalent this concept of the underground is in the story of One Piece, even though it hasn't been a crazy highlighted thing. We start off in Alabasta with dance powder. It wasn't associated with the black market or the underground, but we knew that it was an illegal substance. And with everything else in the story, you can later come to the conclusion that dance powder was a thing that was sold on the black market through the underground. Obviously leading into Water 7, we'll talk more about Frankie, but Adams would. I think that more than anything, this arc introduces the concept of localized underground. Pretty much every major country or major area has its own market. Then of course we see the human house in Sabaody. This leads directly into Amazon Lily, where we meet somebody who was sold as a slave. This takes us into the new world, where again the concept comes up once more with mermaids. Caribou trying to be real dodgy. We then have an arc which is pretty much solely dedicated to the concept of the underground. Even though we don't get a payoff necessarily, I don't feel like we're paid off to the concept, like it feels resolved within the story. Caesar selling uh, Smiley, Chino Cooney, and we even see him broadcast this to potential buyers, brokers. This of course was Oda's segue into the concept of Smile Fruit, which related directly to Doflamingo as probably the biggest trader, biggest player in the underground connected to literally everybody, including the world government, Celestial Dragon, Cypherpole, and Kaido, among others. We also learn that the Revolutionary Army has taken an interest in underground dealings. They're looking for the weapons providers, which are sparking wars on various islands that they're associated with. Ultimately, they may not know this at this point, but they're looking for Kaido. We know that now. But in this arc, we also learn that the underground doesn't just exist within the New World. It doesn't just exist within the Grand Line. It exists in the Four Blues as well, because we see the Barrels Pirates sell the Opi Opi no Mi Black Market in the North Blue. But of course, most of this does actually spider out of the New World. And we see this even more clearly in the next arc in Whole Cake Island. Big Mom is associated with underground emperor she invites them to her tea party i think here we get a greater sense of the multitude of products that the underground provides stussy pleasure district jigra who is an organs dealer mother carmel who provides orphans dufeld was a loan shark they call drug peclo the major undertaker personally i think he holds a scythe i think that he is an assassin a theory that we made a long time ago that I really like is that he's a bounty hunter, but he's the black version of a bounty hunter because he takes bounties that are illegal, which I would assume would include law-abiding people. But I think that mainly what you can take away from Whole Cake Island is this underground really starts to become its own entity. It grows into something that should play a role in the future of the story, and for sure that we know that it will, at least in one way. Stussy, a member of CP0, is deep undercover as an underworld emperor. And we see that the people that are purchasing Mother Carmel's products or orphans is in fact, again, Cypherpole and the world government. None of this I find to be breaking news because of course we had the human auction house where Celestial Dragons were actually purchasing slaves. This is additive when, when we go to Wano, we discover for sure that the Celestial Dragons and Cypherpole are dealing with Kaido purchasing the weapons to send to countries. So it leads to the pretty clean and obvious theory that the world government is actually supporting the underground. They are a part of it and they rely upon it. The Revolutionary Army has caught on to this and is likely wanting to reveal this to the world at some point in time to undermine their credibility and turn the world against them. 
But outside of this, I think that the underground should come up again. We should meet new characters. They should be involved in some way. So this leads us into talking about Frankie and his potential underground family. We know that Frankie is from the South Blue, but we've already argued, right, that the underground extends into all the blues. Another thing that we didn't bring up was Capone Beige, a member of the five gangster families from the West Blue, right? So there was an underground in the South Blue as well. Frankie says that his parents are pirates, but pirates have been deeply involved in the underground at multiple instances in the story, most notably, of course, Doflamingo. You can tell me that uh, the impression that you got from Frankie's whole story is that his parents weren't all that important, and that's fair enough. But you have to bear in mind that Frankie is over 30 years old. His parents abandoned him when he was four years old. 30 years has passed. Another intriguing theory which is worth bringing up is that you get the sense from Doflamingo that the underground has only grown in recent years. He says business is booming. And we also know that Doflamingo was an integral member of the underground in the first place. His connections, his ability made everything prosper. All of this probably wasn't relevant until Doflamingo was around 20 years old. Doflamingo is 40 in the current storyline, so 20 years ago. Again, Frankie was abandoned 30 years ago, so you have a time period for which the whole industry could grow, including the flam role in that. And if they are high up at all within the underground, it is most likely that they will have aliases. Which, as a fun little discussed fact, Frankie already has his alias and has for years. His name is Gutty Flam not Frankie. And this leads us into the actual arc itself, where I think that it paints pretty clearly that Frankie is the leader of the underground in Water 7. An interesting thing that we see in Punk Hazard is we see the brokers that are uh, bidding for Caesar's weapon, and they all wear masks. Frankie is introduced with a mask, a mask and an alias. Like this seems so obvious in retrospect, but Frankie was literally a part of the underground when we first met him. He scrapped ships and then sold that on the black market, which is how he knows how to purchase the Adams wood in the black market. The underground is pretty intimately associated with gangster activity. You see this with Capone Beige. You also see this in Wano with the Yakuza. And Frankie in Water 7 is introduced as essentially a gangster. His family, the Frankie family, has all of those motifs. And here's another little known connection about various things that we know regarding the underground. There's an association of uh, illicit activity taking place in houses. The human auction house in Sabaody, the toy house in Dressrosa, Sheep's house for Mother Carmel, and then we see the Frankie house. But here's the most fascinating thing. Frankie is not just this way at 30 years old. He is this way from pretty much the moment that Tom adopts him. He certainly didn't learn any of these behaviors from either Tom or Iceberg. And another interesting fact is that before Tom even adopted Frankie or taught him anything, Frankie was already a skilled builder, interested in creating weapons. Weapons that we now know are a fundamental trade within the underground. We see this with Doflamingo giving weapons to various countries created in Wano. We also see this with Caesar Clown creating various kinds of weapons as well. So long story short is I think that Frankie picked up on these gang habits and introduced himself into the underworld because that is what he knew as a child from his parents. Now who are they and what they do? Your guess is as good as mine, right? We don't know. This is purely speculation territory. However, it has not been explained how Frankie is able to piece together scraps in order to create weapons. We also see after he tries to stop the puffing Tom. His body is damaged beyond repair, things aren't working, and he already knows, it appears, he already knows how to fix himself, how to give him metal parts. So I think that the Flam family, Frankie's parents, are specialists in human augmentation. You have characters like Gotti from the Fire Tank Pirates. Fire tanks are associated with the underworld. Gotti lost his arm and it's replaced with a weapon. I think that this is the kind of work that the Frankie family would do. You could say that we've seen other people demonstrate these uh, capabilities throughout the story, for instance, Queen or Vegapunk with the Pacifista, but neither of these seem for sale or like sort of a black market variant. It could also be true since we know that the world government is connected to the underground that Vegapunk works hand in hand with Frankie's actual parents or some other family member, for instance, a brother or a sister. But yeah, guys, that's the theory. I think that it would be really cool if 
Cuddy Flam, Frankie's parents and or family were associated with the underground, potentially even an underground emperor who goes by an alias. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this theory. As always, I'm curious as to your thoughts. You can leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, show support for it by clicking the thumbs up button and subscribing. Too many of you that are watching are not subscribed. But if I can get you now, maybe I'll get you in the next video. Until then, guys, have a wonderful day.